I thank the representative of the International Federation of Medical Students Association, and now I give the floor to the representative of the International Federation of Family Development. Madam Chair, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, let me begin by thanking you and the rest of the members of the Bureau for your work during these days. In this occasion, I would like to state that many observers have recently warned that too often the voice of the elder and younger members of families is not included in discussions around community life. Generations rely on each other by sharing knowledge, experience, and meeting the care needs of their most vulnerable family members. Nowadays, population, ages, structures, aging, changes in family arrangements along with urbanization are increasingly influencing international relationships, both on a personal and a societal level. It is not enough to say that communities that are good to grow old in are good also to grow up in. There must be intentional efforts to build connections between the generations. The double income family model has become more and more common. Parents, and especially women, face an increased double responsibility to provide care for the youngest and oldest of their members. In addition, the cities are attracting the young generations, which leads to a disconnection between the youth and the elderly rural generation. Madam Chair, the International Federation for Family Development, working in 66 countries, is aware of this pressure over intergenerational relations. An aging population puts more pressure on social protection systems, pension schemes, healthcare systems, and employment. At the same time, education and care for children formerly provided by the elderly are left to the public and private sector. In line with the 2030 agenda, there is no better approach to build strong societies and enhance social integration than a family perspective. There is a need to rediscover and recognize the essential contribution of families to the well-being of children, youth, and elderly. We are committed to promote that transition from a multi-generational society into an intergenerational one to make sure that one, no one is left behind. Such a goal can only be tackled effectively through a multi-stakeholder approach, where governments, private sector, civil society, and academia work together Partnerships between them should discover opportunities for voluntary, constructive, and regular interactions in family, workplace, and society at large. Thank you, Madam Chair.